Hello, how are you? Hope you're all doing very well. Well, I hope you have been watching the, what's his name? Ben from the Suspicious Observers. He's been having more Q&A sessions, answering a lot of very important questions. Now, I just want to let you know one thing. I don't 100%, of course, trust Ben. I think he has some good information. But you know we all have to be extremely careful about uh, trusting anybody. And, you know, we need to collect our own information. I've been collecting information for many, many years because I've known for many years that these catastrophic events are coming. People have pointed these cycles out. Even when we are talking about the Mayan cycle, like what we had at 1212, and, you know, we assume that, oh, a catastrophic event is coming because the Mayan cycle um, was over. But I think that was just a, um, should I say, false flag or something that uh, people, the elite wanted to see how we react to something like that, to a, you know, a catastrophic cycle. And, but I don't think the Mayans were that far off because we are actually going into this catastrophic cycle. And so the Mayans were really not, you know, wrong. Maybe we just kind of interpreted their information a little bitty too off. We were just kind of off. If you're thinking about 12,000 about 12, years or whatever their cycle is, uh, I don't remember, 3,000 year cycle, uh, we were just a little bitty off. So the fact is that these catastrophic cycles happen. And many people have researched these ca catastrophic cycles. And so many people have talked about since 2000, you know, something is approaching. Something is approaching. And you know what? It is not just, oh, we Christians say that or Bible believers say that about end times. No, we know now, you know, with this suspicious observers, um, that it's people from all kinds of beliefs, backgrounds, whether it be New Age, Buddhism, whatever they're from, they believe in these things. They can observe these things. Now, I have said that this suspicious observer is not necessarily a Christian. Okay? He, I, I, as I listen to him more and more, he goes a different direction. Now, he said in his last video, oh, yeah, he believes that could be, you know, the wrath of God, biblical uh, things happening. And he is right. He is right. It's, a, it's, a, it's his opinion, of course. But when we believe in the Bible, we believe that uh, um, the wrath of God is coming. Now, people, I know a lot of people don't even touch that. They're still stuck in their stupid tribulation crap. I'm going to call it that way. Okay? They're still stuck because they're listening to dispensationalism. And they're stuck. They don't realize that we're going into the wrath of God right now. Again, read Zechariah 14. Man, maybe we need to just check that out today. Because I read it last night. Go to Zechariah. Uh, 14, okay, because there we read it, we read it clearly, I'm going to have King James right now, so, now, how does it start, it starts with, behold, the day of the Lord cometh, now, let's 
define it here. Okay, the day of the Lord cometh. Now, if you are new, maybe you don't know the day of the Lord. How long the day of the Lord is? Maybe you still think, oh, the day that means it's one day. No, we know that a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. Okay, we know that from Second Peter, I think three. Okay, you can find that a day、uh, is like a thousand years. You can put that in, and you find it. Okay, so we know that it's not just one day; it's a thousand years. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Of thee, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Do you see what kind of battle is that? Is that a, a Gog and Magog battle? No, that is. Armageddon battle, Revelation sixteen, and you need to look at the sixth bowl of wrath. That's where that battle is described. And the city shall be taken, and the houses、uh, ravaged, and the、uh, no no, and the、uh, the houses rifled, 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 and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. This is what it says: there will be a battle, and is the Lord protecting、uh, the city? No, it, He's not protecting the city. Okay, He's destroying the city. He, yes, then goes out. Then the Lord shall go forth and fight against those nations as when He fought against in the day of battle. So then we say we see that then he's going to intervene, but not after、uh, everything was destroyed and the women were raped and、um, people were taken in captivity. Okay, then we need to continue to read. It says right here. It says. In that sh- in in and it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them and they shall lay hold. Now, this is talking about the battle, okay? Then he goes into saying about, and maybe I need to go back to fourteen. Uh, thirteen. I'm gonna go back to thirteen. So if you continue to read, you see that there will be the day of the Lord, right? This is the day of the Lord we're talking about. That there will be terrible things happening before Jesus establishes His kingdom. It says in nine verse nine. It says, "And he shall be king over all the earth." That is after he destroyed his enemies, all his enemies. And who are his enemies? His enemies are everybody who was against him. Does that include the Jews? If they're against him, yes. How many Jews accept Messiah today? So, in other words, all those Jews. That are against him will be destroyed. He's not going to save them. They have to accept him. They have to bow down to him. They have to accept that he is king of kings and lord of lords. And then his kingdom is established. And we can read that. But what happens before? Before is the wrath of God, and we see this in other.、Uh, Parts of the Old Testament, Isaiah writes that very clearly too. That the Lord will、uh, come in fury, in fury, people. And it's important that we do know that. So this is what we are now seeing and preparing, or we are seeing that it is being prepared. And if we're just closing our eyes. We are not going to、uh, 
have any profit from it. We can say, oh, we're going to enjoy life until the last minute. Well, only really the people that are not following Jesus do that. People that follow Jesus, they will use every minute that they have to witness to others. That they have to repent. They have to follow Jesus. And they have to continue witnessing to other people. That is our purpose in this life. Not to enjoy life. I have a lot of people, or I know a lot of people that are not Christians. And that's what their idea is, is to enjoy life. Now I have a neighbor friend who just came down again with cancer the second time. And... Well, I know they were talking about enjoying life. You know, they're my age and thinking about enjoying life, you know, in, in, during their retirement. And he's coming down with cancer. Well, his brother-in-law just died of, I think, cancer. And now he's coming down with cancer. And people, yeah, no, this is not what we are actually ought to do. Well, yeah, I want to live a little longer. I want to, I don't want to die right now. I want to live a little longer. But why do you want to live longer? What is the purpose for you to live another 10 years or 20 years? What? To enjoy a life? Is that what it is? Well, I want to go hiking. I do too. But is that what life is all about for you? Is to enjoy things? I'm not saying that people can't enjoy things. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm trying to tell you is that is not what we're here for. We are here to witness for Jesus. And that's the only thing. We are here to witness for Jesus. Okay? And that's the only thing we're living for. And then it's time for die and that's it. When God believe, uh, thinks that we have done our job, that's when we should be going. We shouldn't be trying so terribly uh, to prolong our lives. We know that this uh, uh, catastrophic event is coming, and we cannot do anything about it. Now, this Ben thinks that he's going to make, make it through this catastrophic event. He thinks you can be prepared and you can make it. Okay. More power to him. More power to him. Then what? Then he comes out on the other side. And then what? What does Zechariah say? We're still going to have to bow down to Jesus. And his bride who's going to be reigning with him. His queen. He is the king. So who is the queen? The bride of Christ. We when we have followed Jesus, we are connected to Jesus. We have accepted uh, the, the covenant with him. You know, the, the, the covenant, which is the same as a marriage covenant. We accepted this new covenant with him. And we follow him. And we're waiting for him. We will be ruling with him. Here he says that he will be ruling, right? But who is ruling with him? Of course, the bride. Why? Because we see the bride with him in um, Zechariah um, 14.5. It says right here, And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee or with him. Okay? The Lord my God shall come. Who is the Lord my God? That is Jesus, the Messiah, he will come and all the saints with him because he will fight the battle. He will destroy. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. So here again, it tells you about these catastrophic events that will happen okay in the evening it shall be light what does that mean everything is confused how can it be a light in the evening 
It will be not day or night, but in the evening, and there will be a light. There will be light. Why? Because we're going through a pole shift. And then it says, "All the land shall be turned as a plain." That means there will be a traumatic change. There will be earthquakes. There will be. Uh, it tells you in four um, that the olive, the Mount Olive, Mount Olive will split in half. So you know there will be catastrophic upheavals. During that time,、uh, if we're reading Revel, I mean、um, Revelation, we hear that every city on this earth will be destroyed. Yeah, and that's actually what Ben is saying too. It will be so severe; the changes will be so severe that every city will be destroyed. So, if you think you're going to make it in the cities, that's wrong. Anyway, you will not make it in a city. You will have to leave and be out of those cities once the whole uh, uh, catastrophic thing starts. You have to get out. And how many people have said that, you know, in recent years? You need to get out out of the city. I mean, if anything, you will not survive in the city because once the earth is shaking, people. Okay, and that's what he's actually saying right here with Jerusalem. Once the, and that that happens to the whole earth, Babylon, the Great will fall, okay, which is the Vatican will fall. It will be burned up because of all the catastrophic things that are that are happening. So there will be lots of catastrophic events. You can just read Revelation sixteen and see all the things that will happen, or listen to you know listen to、uh, Ben. He will tell you lots of things that happen, and again, I am not just totally following him. He is saying some things that I would say,、mm, "Wait a minute." He said、uh, in his last video, "Oh, he doesn't think there's that many、uh, chemtrails." People, I see the chemtrails. He lives not too far from me. Okay, he lives in Colorado. I live in in Colorado Springs. He lives in Colorado Springs, probably I think up the up、uh, the mountain a little bit. But I live south, and I know how many how many chemtrails they're producing out there. I see it every day. So, yeah, I see it. And he says, "Oh, there's not that many." Well, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think there's a lot more than what he wants to admit. And sometimes, you know, I don't. I、uh, you know these people that are outspoken like that. I don't know in how much that they are actually also、uh, manipulated by the elite, because he said that in his last video too. Oh, they're not going to get any more information about this and that. Why not? Because they don't want a panic. See, they're not telling you how close we are to the real,、uh, you know, catastrophic event starting. They don't want us to know. And even Ben, you know what? He goes along with it. Well, he doesn't want panic either. That's what he says. That's why I'm saying I think he is not、uh, letting us know everything. He's saying, "Oh yeah, it's coming," but he doesn't tell us exactly either. People, we need to be prepared because we have more signs than just the catastrophic things that are going to happen. We have political signs that are just as important. Our political situation should show us how far we are to the end. Okay, not only our political situation, but the the、uh, modification of humankind. And I'm going to call it modification of humankind. I'm not going to say what kind it is. You can check it out yourself. But that there is modification going on. That we want to have AIs, and you know that we want to have better humans. We know that it's public. It's out there. It's Karl、uh, Klaus Schwab stuff, right? Economic、uh, World Economic Forum stuff. It's out there. It's not hidden anywhere. They do want changes in humankind. So it's not any any secret. 
And we see that as Christians, we can see that and we can say, well, the minute they're really starting with this nonsense, God's going to be ticked off, just like he was ticked off in front of, before the flood. Same event, right? The flood came because of what they did, the manipulation they did to humankind and the manipulation they did to the DNA. And the same thing is happening again today. The very same thing. So people, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, uh, signs that show us how close, how close we are to the wrath of God. And we have to be prepared. We have to prepare, number one, uh, emotionally. Okay? This, uh, ben said that again too. Once these things start, okay, they will trigger a whole bunch of your drama, past drama. And if you have a lot of past, lots of past, I mean, lots of things in your past, drama in your past, it's very hard to manage through these hard times. Okay, well, we are lucky if you're really following Jesus and you're being taken out before these catastrophic events start, then you're lucky, okay? You can be hiding in the chambers, in the rooms that Jesus prepared. But what about if you have to go through it because you were foolish and you didn't want to follow really Jesus. You were hanging on to this life because you wanted to have good life, people. How many people say, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian, but they're hanging on for dear life to this life and they want to enjoy it. How many? Because you cannot love both. You cannot love the, this world and the things of this world. I have said that in a previous video. You can't do both of them. Yeah? Don't love, and I think that is in, in uh, First John. You cannot love the world and the things in it and also love the Father. The love of the Father is, is not in you. That's what it says. Okay? Don't love the world and the things in, in the world because you know, the love of the Father cannot be in you. I think it's in First John. You can, you can read First John and it's probably in there. So, yeah, we need to make a decision today. Are we going to live in this world or we're not going to live in this world? Ben is going to live in this world. He knows. He knows he's going to have to make it through it. And he's preparing everything. So you need to make sure you think what you're going to do. Are you going to prepare for this world? And try to make it? Or are you going to say, well, yeah, I'm going to prepare for some of the things because some of the things are coming and I have to make it. Well, you don't have to make it um, to the, you know, to the uh, rapture. But it would be nice to survive until the rapture and continue to tell people about Jesus. So then you have to be prepared in a certain way. Like you may have to have some food. Jesus is not going to come until next year if he comes this year. I mean, if he comes next year, it won't be until next September. And many things still can happen before that. Many. Okay, our government is crazy right now. Very crazy. And you have to be very careful, um, you know, with our government today. I mean, they, they do one crazy thing after another. You just heard what he did lately, putting um, the COVID on this um, childhood vaccine list. I mean, how crazy can it, how much crazier can it get? But anyways, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, keep yourself informed what's going on, people. Keep yourself informed. And um, because it's going to go really, it can go really, really fast. Things can happen really fast. You have to be prepared. You have to be prepared emotionally too because you may have to go through quite a, a lot of emotional things. Okay? Fear. They're going to put again another fear mongering on you. Okay? Were you prepared for the past two years or were you freaked out? If you were freaked out, 
you know, with this pandemic, don't let them freak you out again. Don't let you, them be freaked out. Because we have no need to get into panic mode. No need for nothing. Nothing. Jesus will always be here to take care of us. If it's time for us to die, we will die. Okay? We will prolong our lives as much as we need to um, keep our body healthy. That's the most important thing. Keep the body healthy. Okay? How do we do that? Good food, enough sleep, um, exercise. These, got, these are the things that we need to think about. To stay healthy, to keep our body healthy. And the reason why we want to stay healthy is to be able to witness for Christ just a little longer. But we do not have to go with the world and prolong our lives so we can have more fun. That's not what we need to do. When it's time for us to die, it's time to us to die. We are not so clinging to life that we miss, that we miss when Jesus is coming. We don't want to miss his coming. Anyways, people, I'm coming to an end. Just wanted to do a fast video today and let you know to hang in there because I see so many signs that Jesus is very, very near. He may have not come, uh, he, he didn't come this year, but next year may be a different story. And he's giving us more time to witness. So think about that. Let us be, let us be a witness for him. We need to be a witness and that's all what we can do in this, in this life. All right. Hey. Let the Holy Spirit guide you always.